Hi, this is uh, Kuru with uh, the first uh, video in my um, Christmas calendar uh, series. And I was thinking of starting this with the first IBM PC, the 5150, but I actually have uh, lent my uh, 5150 uh, to a film company that's using it as a, a film prop for a film uh, they're making. So the closest I get is one of these uh, 5160s. I actually have one other 5160 too, but that was uh, borrowed away to the same company as a, a film prop. So this will be a short uh, walkthrough of this machine. And as you can see, they're in a pretty raw condition and we will get some, some close up of this, uh, of this later. Uh, this one actually has a lot of, of staining on the top. I have not done anything to these machines. Uh, they are straight out of, of storage. And this one even has the lid uh, removed like so. It's, it was not removed, but it was uh, kind of open. And you can see that the front of the disk drive here is actually broken, so this might have yeah, been subject to a fall uh, or something. Both of them have the original uh, floppy mounted. Yeah, both of them have the original uh, hard drive, the, the Seagate uh, mounted, and they have uh, the five and a quarter inch IBM branded uh, floppy drive. And they also have the original IBM cards. And the difference, the main difference on the motherboards between the 5160 and the 5150 is that the 5160 has um, eight slots on the motherboard. And it also has um, more memory on board as uh, standard. This one has been subject to some intrusion before and this one is the one with the, um, the case lid taken off and uh, the power plug was disconnected from the power supply and that might mean that someone has been in here before and do some fault finding uh, or uh, whatever. As you can see I have done no cleaning whatsoever on, uh, on these machines. The first business of the day is actually see if it's safe to uh, turn these machines on. And as this is not factory fitted uh, with a clock chip or uh, a battery, I think it's safe to say that they have not been subject to the cor corrosion that's normally present on the AT kind of, uh, of machines. But this power supply might look a bit suspicious. This is the 130 watt version of the, the power supply. This is made in 1984, uh, this power supply. And I will also take the lid off the other computer. We will try to start one of these. And we will also try to, to start uh, the appropriate uh, uh, monitor. But we will see which one we, we choose to, uh, to start. We, uh, we picked the, the better one of these. Yeah. I will take the, the lid of this uh, now to see if it's, um, if it's in better shape than the other one. And as far as I know, this has not been uh, opened before. In, not in my ownership at least. I've had these uh, machines uh, sitting around now for yeah, this one, maybe three or four years. This one I actually got two or three years ago, that too. This was all original uh, IBM screws. And this is another revision of, um, of the main board, I think. At least I think it's, um, 
another revision. The look of the print is different. This is uh, totally green and this is more uh, military olive uh, color. This motherboard also has some bodge wires. If you look into um, to this, you can see that there are some bodge wires here that um, is glued to the motherboard and is uh, soldered onto the board. These wires is not present on this version. Otherwise, they almost have the same uh, configuration. Um, this one over here has this board that's uh, fitted with a 15-pin uh, DB connector, and that might mean that it is a network card of sorts. Let's see what we find out. It's made. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is. Actually, looks like it's a, a Norwegian card or a Danish card. It stands Tilatelse on it, and that's in, in Norwegian. It's made in 1985. And I'm, I'm not sure uh, what this is. I might have to do some uh, some research. This is Copyright Software Engineering AS and it states PCX21E. Is it actually possible that this is a measurement card of, of some kind? So this will of course be something we have to look up. And this is the video controller card. And this is the same in, uh, in both machines. Uh, the PCB looks to be about the same. There might be some uh, some revision uh, difference. And as I said, this power supply was made in 1984, but this one has a power supply from 19 1985. And of course, these old power supplies can have uh, Rifa caps or other bad caps. And here you have a floppy controller card, and here you have the MFM. Uh, drive controller card and, and the floppy controller card and this one is a parallel uh, adapter card and it's the exact same one that's uh, fitted in in this one on both machines all the RAM is uh, socketed and it yeah, I have to take out the floppy to see if everything is is connected in here but I do see some empty sockets for for something down there. So um, I do will prepare now for uh, turning one of these on and I, I do have my pick of, um, of IBM uh, monitors here or I can choose uh, a different monitors. I have some of these uh, VM 1400 style uh, display that's also monochrome and this one is a special uh, screen, it's a, a bit different connector, but these two is um, a monochrome uh, IBM monitors, and I can test uh, one of them, but I do think I will dare to, uh, to turn this on. I will just have to get um, a power cable. So, are we going to, um, to play it safe and try to switch on the computer first and then the monitor? Or am I going to give the monitor a try first? We can, of course, maybe do, do both, but if I first take this one and just connect it to uh, to power, we do know that if the fuse breaks afterwards, it will be this insulated unit. And this does not have a, a power switch, I think. And I don't think 
I can hear any high frequency. Maybe it needs to be connected to the computer, I don't remember. But I can try uh, with another one. This actually has some loose part in it. Maybe not the wisest choice to, to test this with. Maybe we try to play it safe and take the VM. This actually turns on. So we know at least that this gives power. And I will connect this to the power supply. And I will connect this to the display card. And I do have something really nice. This is uh, my original IBM uh, keyboard that actually belongs to my uh, original uh, uh, XT, the one that was borrowed to the movie company. Like so. Yeah, and now I've connected keyboard, I've connected the monitor and then it's this one for, for power and after that this is an IBM so it's the big red one and I can actually hear it coming to life normally this uh, takes a couple of minutes to uh, to fire up. I don't think it's um, it's working because it does not try to spin up the hard drive on this. I might have to, to disconnect the hard drive card and, and see if it's boot with floppy. Otherwise I actually have to do some more fault finding on this. I will try uh, disconnecting the, um, the hard drive and uh, see uh, what happens. It's a matter of, of removing the power supply connector and I'm going to remove the board. The hard drive is disconnected, so the load on the power supply and everything else is uh, it's not so uh, so heavy. So we will try again. You can hear this is an AC uh, fan in the power uh, supply. It spins up and it's synchronized with the 50 Hz uh, wave. That's not, not a, a very cooperative uh, computer. So then it's over to, um, to the next one to see if that will start. This one actually looks a bit more risky to start. It's a bit more damaged. I know it's been hit with something here because this, this is loose. And someone has been in here uh, with these connectors and, and disconnected them. And otherwise it looks Okay, this is off. I will plug this in like so. I will plug this in like so. Then it's testing time. How will this go? Oh, it was a bit more aggressive uh, fan. Uh, I can't hear anything from the hard drive. I'm not sure if there is any sign of, of life on, uh, on this. 
as I said before, it normally takes some time for the display to, uh, to turn on. They actually do some internal memory tests and stuff before they, um, they turn on the monitor. Maybe try with another monitor. I do have my storage bunker next to this room, so I do have access to a, a lot of old stuff to test with. And this is a machine that, or a screen that has been <laughs> heavily used. It actually has a, a pretty heavy burn in on, on the screen, so I have been using this as a test, so I do know this, this works, but I've not been using it because the, the burning is so heavy. I am going to turn this off and I'm just going to plug out this and connect this one. Like so. Yes, and as you can see, this has not been the best day for uh, testing old uh, IBM equipment. None of these machines uh, machines appears to be um, to be working. And I do will do some more uh, fault finding on these machines, but uh, that will be in uh, another episode. So this will uh, be it for. Um, uh, this first uh, episode in my calendar series and I do apologize for these videos being less edited or less scripted uh, than my usual videos but this will be more of a, a presentation of some of my old uh, MS-DOS machines as a celebration uh, to um, December I will try to do a follow-up uh, each day of, um, of December until uh, Christmas. So thanks for uh, watching and please hit subscribe if you want to be notified uh, when we post uh, new uh, videos. Hope to see you in the next one.